Phil, we're a couple of days on from the world indoors, the Irish women's relay team finished fifth in the world. What an incredible performance on Sunday night. What are your thoughts now a few days on? Yeah, it was absolutely super for us as a as a team. Like the world final was obviously the the aim. We were seventh in 2022. We just missed the final by one spot. So we knew it was going to be really tough to qualify. Um, there was nine teams were selected to go to Worlds. Six were obviously going to make the final. Our heat draw was absolutely stacked. Like we knew you were saying and um Netherlands were going to be medal favourites and the Belgians are always in every single final. So um that was going to be stacked, but we knew that if we gave it everything, the fastest loser spots were probably going to come from our um heat. But no, I led the the girls off. Um, I suppose first leg isn't somewhere that I would usually be indoors. Usually I'm second leg or fourth leg. Same outdoors, I'm never the first leg. But uh, for me, I actually enjoyed the first leg because it to me it's like running an individual four hundred. Sometimes I'm I find it hard to judge of run the second, third or fourth leg indoors because you're obviously running two laps. It's different to an individual. So no, I led the team off. I was very happy to do that and put them in contention. Um, and then it was, a, it was a nervous wait, waiting for the that second heat to run. But we we made it by 12 hundredths of a second every hundred matters, as you can see in this game. And uh, to come fifth was, was unbelievable. It was so close to the national record again. And I think the aim for us was to go out and break that national record because we... I suppose when we've raced, we always tend to break it in the heat. And then there's been a bit of a drift in the final, but we were so close to breaking it. Um, Again, to come away fifth, it now shows that Ireland belong in these major, we belong in these major finals as well. Like we've gone to major finals every single year for the last few years, since 2021. Um, And relays is the way to go. Our team was obviously so strong. It was a, a national record by two and a half seconds. I think when we broke it two years ago, it was a national record by four seconds. So it just shows how how much 400 meter running has come on um, in Ireland. It's obviously a massive year for us. We have World Relays there at the start of May where we have to qualify for, par that's our only opportunity to qualify for Paris. Um, the top 32 countries in the world will be selected to go. Um, we're well within that, but 14 of the 16 places for Paris come from world relay so everything is to play for there um it's an exciting few weeks we obviously have european championships later in the summer and then fingers crossed hopefully olympic games it's shaping up as such a busy year touch touch, touch wood phil and to get it off to, to such a good start at the world indoors um it just shows the potential within this uh, this, this irish women's four by four 400 relay team would you mention there about running the first leg and you're not used to that just talk to us a small bit about what's involved in running the first leg and, and what your role is for the team yeah, because you need to put the, the the team in contention at the break. So obviously you're breaking after 150 metres where everyone crosses in. So for me, I am I suppose I can use my speed in that regard. But as well for me, I hadn't run a 400 and in, geez, I think it was about six or seven weeks. So there definitely was a bit of like doubts and voices in my head of like, okay, am I going to be able for this? Am I going to be strong enough for the team? Um, And I actually got an invite to the individual 400 as well, which was on the Friday. But I turned that down to focus fully on the on the relay. Um, and I'm glad I did because I wanted to give everything for the relay because it is a very important year for us in that. Um, and then I suppose, as I said, yeah, it's putting the the, the team in the best contention, contention at the break, which is at 200 metres. Um, and then holding your position and trying to clip off a few people, I suppose, as well before you pass over the baton. And indoors is, is hard. It's argy-bargy. It's hard to pass out. Um, the short, the straights are short, and that's your only area to pass out. Um, so yeah, it's all to play for in that first one hundred and fifty meters where you do have to make the break. And I suppose then when we come to the to the final, we were in lane two, so lane two was an awful lot tighter than lane four. Um, in the heat, um, but to put the team in fourth position at the bell is where I was aiming for. I knew the other girls, um, were the one they were fresh. They hadn't ran the heats. Um, so we were the only team that had the same four, um, going out and running the final. Um, but yeah, to run to come to be at the bell in fourth position for the final was the aim, and that's what I did. And to hand it over then to Sophie as well in fourth. How happy were you with your split times? I'm looking at, at him here, it was 51.93 in the heat, and I think it was it was 52.05 in the final itself, so fierce, consistent. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And even for the 52-0 in the final, that again is from lane two. So lane two is an awful lot tighter. So I would love to run an individual four, I suppose, in lane five or six now. Um, But yeah, that was my, I suppose, two fastest times in one day as well um, that I've ever run, even in the individual. And I suppose sometimes there's a lot of folks put on splits, but the team need to perform collectively. Like I did my part, the other girls did their part. Um, Splits can become a bit, I suppose, immaterial, but traditional first leg split is often slow split because you are running from blocks um but I was very happy to do what I could for the team and be back out there I suppose as part of that Irish squad again and uh looking forward to to keeping my position over the next few weeks and on into the big summer you've been very open and honest in the last 12 18 months Phil about I suppose the challenges that, that you faced so how how good did it feel to be to be back in the, the Irish women's relay team and back in a world final on on Sunday Absolutely super, because even if I rewind back to the summer, like I took myself off the, the squad for World um Championships in Budapest because I, I didn't feel I was in the shape. I didn't feel I had something to offer um the team. And I suppose that's hard at the time, but looking back, like it was a decision that I needed to make. So to be out there with the team again, the team is constantly changing. We, we all have to fight for our places all the time, um, which is great for, I suppose, women 400 meter sprinting in Ireland that... The team can change at any point. It's not concrete. But yeah, to go out there again, give it my all, be back to my best and enjoy it on the world stage. Make a, a world indoor final. That's the first world indoor final that I've made. Um, So that's something um as well that I have to be thrilled for. Being a part of that team, bring the national record. Um, Yeah, it was it, it definitely felt good. And it's a very part of you feel to be enjoying your athletics again. 100% because athletics is a tough sport like and it's individual you're training six days a week it's 11 months on it's one month off Um, I suppose people don't see the hard work that goes on behind the scenes Um, day in day out the travel the hard work the dedication sacrifice all of that Um, combined but for me it's my norm so I know no different but um, absolutely look it's my job as such yes I do have a full-time job at the side but it's also I suppose my second job um, and if people were in their own day job and they're not enjoying it they know how hard that is so it's the exact same thing so obviously everyone loves when things are going well things aren't always going to go well but when things weren't going well for such a long time that was that was definitely very challenging but we're on the far side of it now I'm in a in a much better place mentally and physically and I suppose it's important to I suppose highlight that as well because as athletes sometimes we think that we're like robots and we can keep going time and time after again and the mental side of things is so important as well because we need to look after ourselves in that regard so um it is important to realize that we're not someone that can just keep going all the time we can hold our hands up and say yeah we are struggling here a bit and uh get the support that we need and move on there from then you you mentioned there about working a full-time job how do you find juggling both full-time job and, and athletics yeah, you know what? It's actually for me, I enjoy it now. I don't think I could ever go back to full time athlete. Yes, I would love, I suppose, the extra, the free time all the time, but um, work is very supportive. Um, it's flexible as well. And I do like the distraction of going away from the track and going back to work or finishing work and going to the track, vice versa. Um, and I suppose for me, it's like coming to the later stage of my career, like I'm 29 now, sport isn't going to last forever and I suppose the last few years highlighted that for me as well with the struggles that you can have um but my career is just as important as my sporting career so like I didn't want to be like 32 33 retiring from the sport whatever age I do retire from the sport I'm starting at the bottom of the ladder in my career either so you're not going to make a fortune off sport in Ireland so um you do have to to live a life and uh you have to grow up as well as sometimes so um yeah, for me, it was, I suppose, having that balance, having that fallback and developing my career at the same time, hand in hand with my sporting career so that when I do retire, I can fully push on them with the, the actual career. And you're not going to make a fortune in sport in Ireland if you have to keep buying measuring tapes, Phil. I said you yeah. earlier in the week and you could explain this to our, our listeners. There was a picture of you before, um, I'm not sure it's the heat or the final, but you had a measuring tape on, on the track with the blocks. Just talk us a small bit through that. And first off, where did the measuring tape come from? Measuring tape has come from uh, we so for the blocks um yeah you have to have certain settings so obviously you're trying to maximize the um the most you can get out of the block so for me I have my my I suppose settings measured to a T and I always use a measuring tape and sometimes when you go to a major championships you're not allowed to use a measuring tape or you have to use a tape that's provided by them so I just have a standard 
pull out measuring tape. I actually didn't get the measuring tape back after the final. So there was a trip to Van Den Kwop there now yesterday to stock up with a new one. Um, but yeah, it's something that I always have in the bag because it comes down to the, the like centimeters of um where your feet are actually placed in the blocks to get the angles right and different things like that. So um yeah, I suppose that's another technical element that we always have to to work on. So in some beats, so in, in some events, um, you, you actually can't bring the measuring tape with you. Is it how how would you set up the blocks then? Yeah, so you can measure it by your feet as well. Um, but like, so for me, like it's like two and a bit, and on one side and it's three and a bit on the other side. But like, that bit can be very different. Do you know sometimes? Um, so you just have to roll with it in that situation. But as much as I can, I have the 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 measuring tape um and keep it accurate but I'd say team management at this stage are like will you ever get rid of that measuring tape because they always have to go find out if they can actually if you're allowed it or not but there's plenty of other athletes that have it um as well across both Ireland and across uh, the world at the competitions I think it's just a a thing athletes always have and it's the way that we're I suppose we're taught as we grow up and how to set our blocks but yeah it's a it's a statement in my uh, bag anyway Let's put a shout out to the Bend and Co op to send a, a box of measuring <laughs> tapes all over to Bill Healy, please. That's it. Yeah. Stock up. And like we're saying too, Phil, like there's a very, very busy couple of months ahead. And if the, the world relays in Bahamas in the start of May, and that's the qualification event, like you said, the power. So what does the next couple of weeks and months look like for you? Yeah, so for me, I have a down week this week, which is like gladly taken. Um, but then I go back into training next week as normal. It's a full on I think six or eight weeks before we actually compete again. So at the end of April, we go to Florida for a week um, ahead of going to going on to the Bahamas then for another week um, where World Relays is. They, so that's the start of May, into April, start of May. And then May is going to be pretty full on racing wise. And the same with June because end of um, Olympic qualification is June. Um, so it's all to play for over the next few weeks. This is our only, I suppose, training block that we could actually get in now again. Um, where things are clear, there's no distractions, and it's just back to hard work. Before it's a, uh, a few weeks of intense travel and racing again. And what what will the squad look like in the weeks ahead? Obviously, Rashida Adelecki wasn't part of the squad the weekend, but does she come into the reckoning now? Like I know there's a there's a really good strong squad there, and you made reference to the soaps as well after the world final the last day. Like there was there was six of you over there. So what happens now in terms of selection for the for the world relays? Yeah, so the squad will stay pretty much the same. Anybody can race and earn their spot onto the, the team over the next few weeks. Um, I'm not sure if Re Rashida will be in. We would obviously love to have Rashida in for um World Relays and help us qualify. But even without Rashida, it shows what the team has done both here at World Indoors this weekend, but also World Outdoor Championships last year as well. The team got to the World Final and they were the tiniest of margins, I think a tenth of a second off um, breaking the national record um, as well. So, yeah, it's going to be an exciting few weeks for everybody. There will be definitely people that were sitting at home this weekend and want to earn their spot for World Relays and will race over the next few weeks. So um, team management will have an interesting job um, to pick a team. I suppose six girls will travel um, to World Relays. But we'll have the mixed relay team as well for World Relays. So we're going to have the boys in there too. Um, but it is an exciting, it is an exciting few weeks ahead for relay running in Ireland. We spoke in, in in the last year, Phil, and you were making the the point you'd love to become a two time Olympian. Do you see the relay as as, as your best ticket to Paris? Hundred percent of the relays, everybody's ticket to Paris, um, and hopefully we can get the women's four by four there this time. Obviously, we were in Tokyo with the mixed relay, so hopefully we can get there in both relays. But then individually, the aim is always to qualify as well. So. Probably will focus more on the 200 come um, outdoor season because I gained a lot of ranking points indoors. Um, I'm currently within the, the ranking for Paris. So I suppose it's, both, it's about maintaining that and pushing myself further up the, the board and uh, staying healthy, staying enjoying the sport and uh, working hard over the next few weeks. But it's all it's all about the relay for now. Before I let you go, I have to ask you about Charlene's disqualification from the 40 meter heat the last day. For, for kind of the casual athletics fan, it looked very harsh because we talked before about the argy bargy of indoor running. What was your own thoughts on it? Yeah, for the casual athletics fan, it's definitely very harsh. But for the actual athletes, it was very harsh too. And you would question your faith in the sport as well because there was minimal contact there. And like, there was far worse that went on across the weekend and across other major championships when there's no disqualification. So like 
it was extremely harsh on Charlene. It shows that she belongs in the world final. She proved that in her, um, the relay as well of what she's capable of. Um, for Irish support, we always want to see an Irish person in the final. But like, as a an athlete that has run individual 400s indoors across the last few years, I've been in races where far more has gone on and there has been no disqualification. So that was definitely extremely harsh. I suppose for all of us, it's an eye opener of what can actually happen. Um, but indoors is, is you're always going to have argy bargy, but it was appealed and it was counter appealed. And unfortunately, um, the appeal wasn't accepted. But yeah, overall, it definitely it was a dampener on Friday because she earned her spot in that that world final. It was a phenomenal performance, but we used that, I suppose, as extra hunger going into the relay um, to step up our game and give back and uh, let Charlene be a world finalist as well, walking away. And Charlene, certainly, she put on a show as well on Sunday as part of that women's 4 by 4 by 400 meter relay team. So now, congrats again, Phil, and no doubt we'll catch up, touch wood, before you hop on that flight to Paris later in the summer. Super. Thanks a million, Kieran.